Hello, third period AP World History. This is Max here. I think it's it's probably me. Uh, this is a project for me, Canyon, Eli, and Prescott, uh, and Angelo. So I kind of got loopy towards editing the end of this video, and so I figured a disclaimer would be properly in place here at the start of the video. Um, I got kind of loopy towards editing the end of the video, so just bear with me here. It it may get kind of awful pretty quickly, but I'm sure most of you will enjoy the uh, forced humor that has been brought upon yourself in this video. The city of Carthage rested on the same land that is now occupied by modern-day Tunis. It began as a group of Phoenician settlers in 814 BCE and eventually gained independence from the Phoenician state of Tyre in 650 BCE. If you will, they were too tired to continue. Due to its strategic foundation, it quickly amassed enough influence through trade and mercenary armies to conquer and establish authority over the nearby Phoenician states, who were left without a leader after the decline of Tyre. Without lack of proper attire, Carthage continued the Phoenician habit of quick, habit of quick expansion and had soon settled colonies in the Iberian Peninsula, Italy, southern France, and S Sicily, allowing them to gain a nearby monopoly on trade in the most inhabited region of Afro-Europe at the time. This trade-oriented tactic meant that Carthage would encounter various cultures and would usually take some of their traditions and customs back to Carthage. And then environmental too. The Carthaginians were a trade-oriented people, and so they had to figure out the best way to shape their environment to create easily accessible ports and to some degree land routes as well. Carthage would create huge projects where they would recruit civilians to work on carving out parts of the nearby coast to allow more boats and larger ships to take anchor in their ports. While they could do this with some semblance of efficiency, it was always easier to just settle a city on the harbor that was naturally made, and settlers from Carthage were uniquely good at choosing those types of spots to settle cities. They would settle cities on river deltas so they could make the most out of the two sources of water and erect huge wooden poles into the river beds and create large ports for merchant ships to take port in and sell their wares. And no, a river bed is not for sleeping. The Carthaginians had a sort of two-step plan to set up a stable economy. The first step consisted of simple expansion through settlers and the creation of colonies along the coast of the entire western Mediterranean. With these colonies, almost all trade along the Mediterranean would have to pass through Carthaginian cities or their vassal states. The second part of their plan was to turn the best located of these cities into sprawling trade hubs, whose domain would span humongous regions, giving these cities a firm hand on all the economic aspects of their respective regions. From here, it could be handed down to each generation of Carthaginians. Carthage held a strong federal government over the cities, but their spread out location meant that absolute authority was a fantasy. Even with the strong federal government, the cities of Carthage could establish their own laws and each city's culture was unique, as the indigenous people's ideas of, ideals often mixed with their own creating unique nations. Carthage essentially split their municipalities into two different sections, one where they made up capitals of their region, starting with capital letters, and would hold authority over them as the centers of law, culture, trade, and education. The city type was simply there to give Carthage a semblance of authority over the region they had little to do with. These cities were often forts or small towns that only held that only had several hundred occupants, but still imposed the idea of authority over the land, preventing conflict with native peoples. In fact, you could say that the na native peoples could hold the fort for the Carthaginians. Culture Carthage was an expensive, expansive empire whose territory spanned some of the most varied cultures in the world. Their merchant vessels picked up traits and traditions of the far-off lands they traded with and brought those characteristics back to Carthage. The city itself was known as the Shining City, which reflected some of its characteristics and maintain maintained much of their original Phoenician co culture, giving them unique characteristics of the East that were relatively unheard of in the West. The Phoenician settlers were followers of the polytheistic religion derived from Le Levant beliefs and ideals, but eventually, as the city grew to a much larger size, it came to have a large population of Jewish citizens. As time went on, the religion evolved and began to develop aspects of the Sudanese religions, aspects like child sacrifice and graves for stillborn children. However, you could say that they were taking baby steps to become a better civilization. Child sacrifice was relatively common during this age in Nor Northern Europe, and we still see a direct correlation between prosperity of the city and the number of sacrifices. When the city was at war or under siege, the sacrifices would become significantly more common. The religion was based off on the great deities, a goddess named Astarte, and the gods Tanit and Baal. 
Ammon. As trade continued with the Greeks and Persians, the number of gods worshipped increased as they were absolved absolved some of the Middle Eastern deities with their own religions. However, to the Carthaginians, some of the Greek gods were just Greek to them. Economy Perhaps the most important remaining effect of the great empire of Carthage was the trade connections they made with so many various peoples. Carthage had several early competitors such as Syracuse and Salinius, who would attempt to usurp Carthaginian rule in the Italian peninsula. Carthage's army was primarily, primarily composed of quick-moving mercenary troops that were brought up from the surrounding regions, and while this meant effective overseas military operations, it also meant that more money had to be lent to the cities to purchase these troops. The merchant free fleet they, they yielded was the largest in the world at the time and used the same trade routes as the tire. Why reinvent the wheel when you have a tire? <laughs> After they fell, they had sufficiently stabilized the old routes, the merchants who would go on to explore the rest of the Mediterranean and creating some of the best maps available at the time helping to expand their knowledge of the region. Many of the trade routes mapped out by sailors were in use by hundreds of years after Carthage fell to the hands of Rome. However, it did not quite fall. It was more seized. These routes helped bring many of the cultures of the Mediterranean together and led to the rise of many other trade-based empires.